Hey everybody, Mike here. I'm filming outside today. It probably doesn't come through the camera, but when I woke up this morning, I could see an orange haze around the sun. It's hard to believe it, but even here on the east coast of Canada, we're seeing the effects of the wildfires burning on the west coast of the United States. I just wanted to say, anybody affected by these wildfires, stay safe. I've got a short update for you today. SpaceX has applied to run the Starlink user terminals on their ships. I've also got some teasers on some videos I'm working on. All this, coming up. So this week, SpaceX filed an application with the FCC to run up to 10 user terminals, so the Starlink dishes, on their ships that they operate at sea. So this includes their autonomous drone ships, as well as all of their support craft, including the ships that are used to retrieve the fairing halves. So this is up to 10 ships, and it's interesting because this is the first application for authorization to operate a ground terminal in motion, or ESIM, Earth Station in Motion. All of the previous authorizations for Starlink have been for their fixed user terminals, so at fixed locations like in your home. So this is the first application besides the military testing to run the user terminals on a mobile platform. It looks like they selected their ships. It's interesting, I know from the comments that a few of you have been interested in running these on moving platforms like ships, sail sailing ships, uh, also vehicles as well, but this seems like a good entry point. It's particularly interesting because SpaceX runs their live broadcasts and they include the image of the ship landing on their autonomous spaceport drone ships, like Of Course I Still Love You. So it'll be interesting to see if they get the approval, which is still pending with the FCC, if the quality and uh, stability of the landing videos improves. I originally thought maybe they were doing this already. If you've been watching the launch webcasts over the past few months, the stability of the video has seemed to be much better during the landing, not cutting out as much. But it appears like they're just getting ready to start doing this with Starlink. Uh, so hopefully the FCC application gets authorized. It'll be interesting to see if they start doing this, if we see dramatic changes in the video with stability or just higher quality, maybe some 4K footage of the rocket's landing. We'll see. Let me know in the comments if you are interested in using Starlink terminals on boats. It was interesting to note that the authorization or the application, sorry, is for the exact same hardware, the same user terminals that they're using on buildings. So it looks like whatever hardware is in there, it has the capability of operating on a moving platform. The request for authorization is for two years. So I don't know whether that means we won't see mobile terminals for the general public for two years. I think more likely they just want to have a big test window and hopefully they release it to the general public as soon as they get kind of feedback that it's working well. So we'll see. Let me know in the comments if this is of interest to you. So I've got two other projects going on in the background. The first is I'm putting together a bigger video covering everything we know so far about the Starlink installation. From aiming, where you need a view of the northern sky and how big an opening that needs to be, to surge protection, there's a lot of rules around uh, Ethernet cables coming from outside into the house, so what type of equipment might be needed to uh, do that properly. Ethernet cable, rated to go outside if you've got a deployment where the included cable isn't quite long enough. And all of the other surrounding bits, like how you can connect, what might be possible with using your own rotor equipment, just really a summary of everything we know. The second project is continuing my effort to receive Starlink signals with my own equipment, not using the actual user terminal. So I've actually started to upgrade with my little friend here. This is a dish that's suitable for receiving uh, KU band signals. And you can actually see on the end here, this little guy is an LNB, a block down converter that will convert KU band signals down to frequencies that I can receive with something like an SDR. This is a 90 centimeter dish. I'm going to give you a full tour of this and my plans on how to use it. So 
If you're interested in Starlink and any of these developments, subscribe down below. You'll get all my latest updates. Hit the bell icon so you get notified as soon as they come out. So thanks for watching my short update today. See you next time.